Hey there, greetings everybody. I want to welcome you here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So it's Monday night and it's time for a look back at a classic rock album. So for me that means an album over 15 years of age that is a two, usually a high two, a one or a masterpiece for me. I have quite a quite a few um, masterpieces but I have a ton of ones and twos so I've decided to give this album which I loved when it came out and it's an album I always refer back to I think it's his best album and I still think uh, it has some of the clearest sounding stuff that he's ever done on this album it's called so by Peter Gabriel released in 1986 on May the 19th um, recorded at the Ashcombe House in Swainswick, Somerset, United Kingdom. Also at the Power Station in New York City, New York, USA. I wonder why, at the first, when I first thought, thought, seen this, I thought, why would he have it at two such far distance uh, studios? But then if you look at the list of uh, people who played on this album, it's clear that he had a set of musicians in one place and another set. In another place and maybe some of them did both right um, length the CD for some reason is is put down as um, just over 46 minutes and the vinyl at 41 56 so I'm thinking that one of the songs is not on the vinyl that's on this album um, I'm not sure which one that is because I've never only vinyl by this I bought this as a CD this is the original buy for it which came out that year. I got it that year. I still have it. Like some 38 years later, I did absolutely kill it. I love this album. I don't think it's my favorite Gabriel album anymore, but at one time it definitely was. Okay, so it's on the Charisma label, Virgin label, and Geffen. And I believe this is the Geffen version. Let me look here. Yes, because I bought this when it was brand new. It still looks almost brand new. Um, but it, I bought it when it was on Geffen label. It's actually my first experience, I believe, with Geffen record label. There may have been one other one before it, but I can't think of who it would be right now. But definitely um, on those three labels. And uh, I'm assuming Charisma is in the UK. Virgin maybe worldwide, I'm not sure. Or Geffen maybe, maybe both are, I'm not sure. I know Geffen in for Canada because this is a Canada, Canadian release. It even says so right on it produced by um, on the David Geffen record label yeah so uh, produced by Peter Gabriel and Daniel Lenoy Lenoy's Lenoz I'm not sure how you pronounce it it's and I'm not even sure if it's Danielle or Daniel I think it's Daniel Lenoy's anyways excellent album lots of good stuff on this nine tracks in total on this on this album um, I'm assuming some of the remastered editions probably have more tracks, but I'm not sure. So there is a absolute page-long list of um, people who played on this, and I'm going to give it to you. Normally, I, I would just give you the main players and then tell you that there's other people on it, but I'm not going to do that this time. There's too many, there's too many good people on this album. You've got Peter Gabriel on lead vocals and backing vocals. Um, Prophet Synthesizer, Piano, uh, on tracks number 7 and 9. Um, synthesizers, Percussion, uh, Yamato, S, uh, CS80, and a Lindrum, as well as a Synclaver. Now, I'm not sure what a Synclaver is. Cleaver, sorry. I know what a Cleaver is. So maybe this is a one fed through a synthesizer. That would be my guess, but I don't know for sure. And all of these tracks, all of these... Um, credits if you want are all every one of them has a number or several numbers beside it depending on what track they were used on I'm not going to give you all the track listings because it would just take forever to do this so you have Tony Levin playing bass and drum stick bass on some tracks David Rhodes guitar um, on just about every track um also, he play, he has backing vocals on several of the, several of the tracks as well. Jerry Murata, of course, on drums. 
and additional drums on track number five and bass drums only or bass and drum only on um, track number seven. Uh, Manu Kashi and I'm probably bastardizing that because I've never actually heard anybody say this name so but I have seen it for many years it's been because he, he has been on quite a bit of uh, Gabriel stuff drums percussion talking drum you got Chris Hughes on the electric drum on the very first track uh, Stuart Copeland of course is on here as well hi-hat on track number one and drums on track number seven uh, Danielle Lenoy, uh, guitar, uh, trom uh, tambourine, uh, surf guitar, and 12-string guitar on, on various tracks as well. Wayne Jackson on trumpet on tracks 2 and 7, and cornet on track 7. Uh, Mark Rivier Rivera on tenor sax on tracks 2 and 7. Processed sax on track number 6. I'm not really sure what that means. Maybe somebody might be able to enlighten me. Alto sax and baritone sax on track number seven. Uh, Don Mickelson on trombone on tracks two and seven. P.P. Uh, Arnold, Carol, uh, Coral, Go Coral, Coral Gordon, and and D. Clevis on backing vocals for a couple of the tracks as well. Richard T. on piano, T. as in T. E. E. You've got Simon Clark on keyboards, backing vocals on track number three, Hammond organ and bass on track number seven. Kate Bush, of course, is on this album, uh, singing the uh, song that we all know what she sings. Except for I can't remember the name. Don't Give Up, that's the one. Um, uh, L. Shanker on violin on tracks four and eight. Larry Klein on bass on tracks five and six. Yusuf Neiser. Uh, Michael Bean and Jim Kerr on backing vocals on track number five. Ronnie Bright on bass vocals on track number five. Djalma Korea on pseudo, which I'm not sure what that is, congas and triangle. Now, I could be wrong here, but I think pseudo, pseudo is a type of bass, African bass drum. I remember seeing it somewhere. I think that's what it is. Could be wrong, but that, I think, pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, Jimmy Browlower on programming kick, so he does that part. Bill as well on bass on track nine. Nile Rogers on guitar on track nine. Lori Anderson synthesizer and vocals on track nine, and then finally Greg Fulginty uh, mastering. So he engineering, I'm guessing, is another word for that. Anyways, lots of stuff, lots of people on this album. My guess is he. He did some of the tracks in England and some of the tracks here. Maybe there were some tracks that he started in England and then moved here or maybe the other way around. Not 100% sure how he did it, but he used a ton of different musicians for different things on very different... This is not really that uncommon with Peter Gabriel. Even his most recent album is a list a mile long of people who appeared on it. So basically you, you have nine tracks on here all of which I think are good. There's no bad tracks on here. Maybe the uh, This Is The Picture was, to me, always a bit of a weaker track, but not a terrible track by any stretch. Uh, it's the last track on here. I just thought I'd bring that up. Excellent birds, they call it. So, anyways, it starts out with Red Rain. This is a catchy, uh, great vocaled, uh, storytelling song with lots of really good drum and bass parts on it as well I think it's it's um, definitely definitely captures that kind of feel for the entire album right off the bat uh, one of my favorite tracks by him as well uh, basically it's about acid rain right uh, one of the big ones then you have the big colossal hit in sledgehammer which also comes equipped with a absolutely killer sorry video if you haven't seen it you should go look it up and watch it it's actually killer i love it it's a song that i actually sang and recorded and have on demo somewhere uh why i did that i'm not sure other people have asked me also that question <laughs> 
anyways uh, I did like it that much that I decided to record it um, don't give up which is a gr really good song uh, by both him and Kate Bush doing the vocal part on here um, I don't think it's one of the best songs on the album but it's definitely a good one for a duet type type song that voice again yeah this is a, a decent song that really captures the entire kind of feeling of the album as well very very uh, keyboard production is really off the charts here um, it's almost a synthesized album in some ways it does have that feel to it but of course his vocals are fantastic in your eyes has always been one of my favorite Gabriel track his vocals here are magnificent maybe the best on this album I absolutely love it I love everything about this song uh, Mercy Street uh, more toned down song really capturing a kind of somber feeling I think uh, it's almost me feels like a sad song in many ways but still great nevertheless then you've got the big jump up song which is big time much more animated um, pulse pounding I think this is one of his un most underrated songs really good song uh, has long been one of my favorites of his I think it's uh, just just the way he's talking about how grand everything is and how great he is and all this stuff with the yeah just such a great great track we do what we were told this is a little bit of a strange tune this this tune I think actually would have been quite at home on Gabriel number three it, it does have that that kind of interesting sound to it that fits into that album with the acoustic guitar bits and stuff uh, I do not know if there's any acoustic stuff on this I don't recall there being any but I mean as far as this song goes um, yeah but it's really a, a really really interesting tune and then of course it ends off with this is the picture of excellent birds which is um, I guess maybe a throw on song maybe the only one on the album but it's not a bad tune by any stretch not gonna hurt the album I don't think it does anyways and so there you have it there's my take on uh, Peter Gabriel's um, so Peter Gabriel's so yeah very kind of typical Gabriel well produced really strong vocals lots of interesting soundscapes going on here lots of um, uh, catchy beats catchy stuff interesting storytelling which he's noted for I think he does that as good as or better than almost anybody I know and his vocals are spectacular again as always so an excellent an excellent album all around so I hope you've enjoyed this episode of look back at a classic rock album please hit the subscribe and the like if you have any comments about this album or any stuff by Gabriel or anything I've said you can put in the comment section below don't forget to hit the notification bell it's much appreciated and we'll be back next Monday night with another look back at another classic rock album so have yourself a good evening take care and goodbye and now if I could just find the uh